Welcome to the Game Room. This episode, we take a look at Breakdancing Meeples, a filler game from Atlas Games. Before we start, we do need to let you know that Atlas Games provided us with a review copy of Breakdancing Meeples. Right, Breakdancing Meeples was designed by Ben Moy and features art by Six Above. It was published in 2020, just this year, by Atlas Games. Uh, this is a filler game. It can be played with two to four players, with a full game taking well under... 10 minutes though i will say it's not quite as short as the five minutes it says in the box just because you have to do things like shuffle card for a good look at what you get in the tin for breakdancing meeples be sure to check out our unboxing video on youtube so the first thing to know here is the fact sean just said what you get in the tin this game comes in a small tin container and not a box i am not a fan of board games and tins Games and tins do not fit well on board game shelves. I personally would much prefer publishers never use tins ever again. Well, at the same time, it is, however, a very transportable, very great purse or pocket game. I don't know. A cardboard box would be just as transportable, in my opinion. I guess it can't get wet, but you don't want this game getting wet. This is not a weatherproof game on the inside of the tin. So whatever. I, I don't like tins. Some people don't like tins. That, that was uh, their game, their choice. Fair enough. Uh, inside the tin, you get six meeples and six cubes and four different player colors, a bunch of routine cards, and the rules, which are short, sweet, and easy to read. I was surprised to find that each of the meeples are not only color-coded, but they actually have like artwork on them that gave them a unique kind of breakdancing-themed look based on which team they were. I thought that was cool. That was a nice touch. That, like Totally unnecessary, except just for theme. Gameplay here is dead simple. You start with two routine cards. Each of these shows two meeple on them in different positions either on their heads, standing up, or on their sides. Those are your three meeple positions. Laying down meeples are lazy. They don't count. Starter cards, um, these each require two. And at the bottom are spots for putting scoring cubes. And the, the starter cards will go one point for the first time you complete it, two points for the second time you complete it, and one for the third. You start at one timer, and everyone rolls their meeple, like rolling dice. You take a handful of six meeple and drop them on the table. If their meeple land in the pattern shown on the routine card, you pick up the meeple, you put it on the card. When you fill a card, you have to say the name of the dance move you just did out loud and place a scoring cube on the track at the bottom of the card. Then you get to take those meeple back to roll them. Uh, again, no people that lay on their back, and trust me, they like to lay on their back, are lazy and useless and not dancing. And to note, there is an app available for this game that handles things like the timer for you, yep. so no need for an hourglass or anything like that. Yeah, very true. Oh, you can use just a one-minute timer, but yeah, the app is actually really solid. Once time runs out, players add up their scores for their completed routines. Then you enter the remix phase, and this is the, the, the brilliant part of this game. This is what gets you ready for the next round. This is where it's more interesting, because you have a routine deck, and you're going to draw a number of cards equal to the number of players plus one. Then players draft new routines, and it's in order of score from lowest to highest, which is a nice catch-up mechanic that the person in last place first choice these new routines will be more complicated than the player's starting routines needing either three or four meeples but will also be worth significantly more points mixed in with the routines are also what they call rally cards which are kind of like upgrades they cost you one point to take them and you tuck them under one of your existing routines to improve it in some way these have all kinds of different ways to improve it like you can score four points by having at least one cube on three different routines or if the routine you put it under you've completed all the scoring things at the bottom then you get some bonus points and stuff like that so another nice way that if you're feeling lucky you can make a dash for the lead even if you're behind now, after the remix phase, you play another one-minute round. Same rules. Once that ends, scores are tallied up again, and you remix again. The thing here, though, that adds another level to this game is you are only allowed to have three routines. So if you've chosen a routine in the last remix, you can take a new one now, but you're going to have to replace one of your existing routines. And I found in our plays, most people choose to get rid of their basic starter routines because these more complicated ones are worth more points. You continue this for two more rounds, four in total, and at the end, the player with the most points wins. That's pretty much it. It's dead simple. Uh, the companion app for this game, I think, is a must-have to really use it because it is a timer, but it's also a score tracker, which is really useful. So you don't need your pen or paper, and it keeps track of it. It even shows you what order you draft the cards in. It does all the math and thinking for you. Plus, it lays down some beats and gives you a rhythm to play with. Now, it's not needed. You could use any one-minute timer, but by having the scoring as well, like, I saw no reason. Like, it even has a thing where you say you bought one of the, I forgot the name of them, the, the enhancement cards, where it automatically subtracts the one point. Like, if, if as long as you have a mobile device, just grab the app. 
it adds some nice theming and odds are good that you're going to have a phone available so it's a better use than checking your email during a game <laughs> very true though this being a real-time game i don't think you want to check your email while you got your one minute going as for my overall thoughts on breakdancing meeples there's not a lot to talk about here right but i gotta say i was impressed because like, like this belongs on last episode last week we talked about games that were surprisingly good or surprisingly complex and this was kind of both because like the, the the big mechanics just dead simple and it's one of those why didn't i think of that like you you roll your meeple i've seen people do it in carcassonne they roll their meeple and stack them right like like who hadn't how how had this game not existed yet and to be honest we know a designer daniel from everyday board games podcast who had been working on a game that uses this basic concept of rolling meeple to fill slots on cards yeah, I think in some ways what's most shocking is that we didn't get this game before 2020. Yeah, no, true. Like, I, I totally true. Now, I knew that. I knew what to expect here. I knew I was going to roll Meeple and I'm putting it on cards and I'm going to get points for completing sets. Like, you knew that, like, even by the name Breakdancing Meeple, you can Im imply that. But that's, it, it's the remix phase. It, it's that grafted element of the game that really makes this game more than just rolling a bunch of meeple and, and getting some points. Getting to draft new routines is the hard choice. It's it's the one, especially once you get to the end of round three, right? Where you're like, oh, do I get rid of a basic routine or do I try to get, or do I upgrade one of my basics? It's easy to do so that I can get bonus points for completing them all. Like there's an actual choice there. Like there's some planning ahead and trying to decide what to do. And by the time you get to round three, you probably figured out how your meeple like to fall because how you drop them does seem to matter. And I can't get meeple to stand up for the life of me. So the first thing I do is I always get rid of my basic card that has a stand up meeple on it and trade it for meeple on their heads because I seem to be easily roll meeple on their heads. But I love the fact that there's the options and then there's the rally cards that give even more choices. So there's even one that lets you trade in two meeple of one type for another, but it's not worth any points. So if you get that, you're limited to only two routines, but then you can modify your meeple like other people can't. Like there's some real decisions to be made here. Yeah, no, it's really nice when the designers can put that extra effort in so that it's not just rinse and repeat, but a solid thought out system with real catch up mechanics designed right into it. Uh, to me, that says that they had some solid playtesting mm -hmm. in there. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, overall, I had more fun than I expected with Great Dancing Meeples. Like, it started off exactly what I expected and exactly what I wanted, but then it actually added in some depth with the card drafting. Now, while there is more drip here than I thought I would find, like, please don't make me oversell this. This is not a complex or deep game. This is, isn't a thinky filler, right? This is just a very solid, very quick, silly game with a unique and cool theme. It's not going to replace brass or food chain magnet, but that doesn't <laughs> mean it might not be a valid game for your collection. Uh, I, I, it's really, in many ways, it's... Uh, a new version, a modern version of Pass the Pigs meets Roll for It. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get it. If, if you're looking for a quick filler that's got some solid table presence, especially like if you're playing public, right? You are yelling out dance moves, you're rolling meeple, people are getting excited. It's got a one minute timer, like one minute short, right? Like you get get all that agitation in there. It's going to get people laughing and interacting. Check out Break Dancing Meeple. If you're not into light, silly games, this one's not going to win you over. For me, I dig it. What I am really looking forward to is that public play. When the when the pandemic's over and I break that out at like an easy mode event, I think that's going to be the right venue for this game with some adult beverages and players who are not into big heavy Euro games and just want to have some fun. I think this game's going to be a big hit. For a slightly more detailed look at Breakdancing Meeples, you can head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Reviews.